I do believe while Jesus was there, he also healed sick and he cast out devils and he did the things that he normally would do, right? Because this was what he said. He said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty to them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So I'm sure he did those things while he was there. And these are, these are what signs and wonders that would follow the Messiah. And they heard his word and they believed him. And they said to the woman, Man, I tell you, we're glad you came back and pulled us into this thing because, I mean, you know, we would have wanted this, this, this messiah, messiah to just pass by and you come just tell us the news and, and he's gone. And Jesus waited there. She left a water pot, an expensive water pot, I'm saying to you, because that meant a whole lot to any family, the water pot. She said, please, you see I'm leaving my water pot. She said, you know I'm coming back. Because I can't do it on my water pot, okay? So I'm coming back. Wait for me. And Jesus knows, of course I'm going to wait for you. Because that's what I came here for. I came here, I was waiting for you. And now, I'll wait for you until you bring your people. And when I go to you among your people, and they ask me to stay, I will stay with them. It's a lesson of compassion. It's a lesson of love and it's a lesson that teaches us the mission of the gospel. This is the mission of the gospel. You can't get this mission going unless you have compassion. Right? As I told somebody, I said some people think they pray, they pray because of duty. Right? If you don't feel compassion for somebody who is sick or in need, just shut your mouth up. Because you pray not going anywhere. Don't just pray because of pray's sake. Let somebody who has compassion and is feeling it for that person pray. And as the scripture tells you, it said, we don't know how you have to pray, but the Spirit make an intercession with us first with groanings which cannot be uttered. Right? So the Spirit of God feel our pain or what's going on with us to make intercession for us. Understand what's going on in our heart. Right? So don't just pray because somebody says what prayer you figure well you love to pray. Understand what you're doing. Because you must have compassion. Right? You must be able to put yourself in the position where that person is. To understand what's going on. To feel for that person. Right? And then you can pray. Because you can take that person's sorrow and that person's trouble before the throne of grace. Then you can intercede for that person. Right? And that's what is very really important. So, the scripture tells us that Jesus abode with them. And he was glad to stay with them two days. Until he would go on his journey again. And he set his disciples an example. Because even when he was about to leave, in Acts chapter 1, he said to them, You shall receive power that the Holy, when the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria. Yes, he said that. In Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah. So when he told his disciples, must go not in the way of the Gentiles, go to the last sheep of the house of Israel. Here were the last sheep of the house of Israel. They were Israelites too. They were blood-born Israelites. But somewhere along the line they got mixed up in their own heritage and didn't know what the truth was. But I, 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 I want to say though, right, I, I want to, 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 to say that I believe that even though the religion was mixed up, they were far ahead of their Jews on the other side who, who had this pure religion. But when the Messiah came, they wouldn't accept him. Because it, it, it doesn't matter how much you're going to read the Bible, 
and how much you're going to know about religion and you're going to be able to teach and all these things. But if you have not known him, what is the prophet? Right? To know him. And he said, this is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou sent. So when we know him, that's what really makes a difference. Right? And we and, and, and we can't just know him as if we think he's Jeremiah or Elijah or, or one of these other prophets. We have to know him as who he is. Okay? And this woman, of course, <clears throat> her name is not given, but she's a precious soul in the scripture. Right? This, I'm like the Shunammite woman, her name is not given, but a precious soul. This woman, everything that Jesus was giving her, she was taking it. Because he broke down the middle wall of partition. I believe it's time that Christian people understand how to break down the wall of the partition. They're not even to understand how to do it, but have the desire to break them down. Right? To break them down. You know, I, I know there was a time when I couldn't say I was like that. Because there was a time when I would think that, well, uh, as I told people some years ago, maybe about well, maybe what, 15 years ago, I think I was talking, I was with more, I was telling them. I used to think one time, like, my church was the best church. And there was no church like my church. But I've been in this church for over 40 years. I've been, I've been walking with the Lord, and I've seen many things. And when I get to realize, I said to my church, it's no better than any other church. There are people in there who are sinners. There are people in there who are evil. People are of the devil, just like anywhere else. There might be more in this church, um, or less in another church, but it's not true. It's not true. And if this was so, when Jesus came and it's his, and his, his own family, he was rejected by them, his own people. And they said they had a pure religion. Pure. The pure thing. Straight from Moses. But what were they doing with it? Because when, they, when Moses told them, A prophet shall the Lord raise up unto you like me. Him shall hear in everything. Everything they said. And that woman had read this, this, this prophecy too. And was waiting for the Messiah. So why can't you accept him when he comes? Right? What does he need? What is he supposed to do? And, and sometimes it's like that. And I said, well, what else can I do with these people? Right? What am I going to do with them? If I tell them that I'm from the Father, they don't believe. Okay. I can, I can say the word that they know I never, nobody didn't teach me these things. They don't believe either. I do the miracles and heal the sick and cleanse the leper. They don't believe. I raise the dead. They don't believe. In fact, when I raised Lazarus from the dead, they were thinking of killing him back. Can you imagine how desperately wicked and evil, and I would say foolish and stupid they were? Because if they tried to kill him again, the same person who raised him could raise him back. And how about he prevent him from killing him again? Alright? So they were so desperate with their evil to destroy him. But over here, there were people welcoming. And I'm glad. Because sometimes, you know, you think to yourself that, well, if you reject the Lord enough, you might think that you are so big and so important. But the Lord knows that there are people who will accept Him. It might not be the majority, but it doesn't matter because those are who He came from. Right? The Bible said He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But to as many as received Him, to them gave me power to become the sons of God and daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name. Right? It is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female. They're all one in Christ. Amen? That's what he came for. So he was waiting there for her. And I believe today that Jesus is still doing the same thing. Waiting there for you. Waiting there for me, waiting there for 
somebody, right, to straighten you out, whatever you, is going on in your life, in love and compassion. And that's what the gospel is about. And I thank God for making me understand these things. As I said, when I'm talking to you about this day, I, I don't hear anybody talk about that. Okay. They will talk about that there was a water that Jesus would give. And I'm on a stuff. And, but the prejudices, they don't, um, they don't address them. And why Jesus really came, that he came in compassion. Right? Sometimes some things happen and you just don't know what to do. I wrote on Facebook one time about this, this woman who came and asked me for some money one day on the street. And when she told me what was going on in her life, I, I was so broken up, I'm telling you. I was so broken up. And I said to myself, my God, you know, sometimes we see some things, and some things people go going through. You don't know them, but you, you actually the world come and you say, my God, what is this? You know, what's going on? You know, can you know? You start to pray for them even before they, they don't know you are anything because you see they're suffering, right? In compassion, right? In compassion. You know, I, I, said, I said to um, somebody one day, I said, you know, even in church, they don't play music the way they used to when I was young in church. When they used to play music, People used to go to the altar and weep. Even in their own seat, people would, would cry tears before God, like I feel right here now. Right? Where do you find those things nowadays? It's almost like a, a circus that people just come in and do acts and just, just want to get out and, and go back to wherever they were. And as I said before, and I'm not preaching on that today about friendship, but the Lord tell me, people go to church and they just tolerate each other. Because at the end of the day, when I'm done, I go back home to my place and I'm, I'm at rest. And what will happen to them if they were put in a place together by God and they can't leave? Right? Where are they going to do? Leave? If they are the alternative, I want to want to tell we leave and let's go to hell. So you want to go to hell? Excuse me. So we thank God today for his compassion, his love, and that he's still doing the same thing today. If you want to understand what it is to serve God, then you read what Jesus, how he lived, and how he operated, how he showed his compassion by people. And Jesus was there for these people when they were rejected by others. So he let us learn not to reject people because of all these stigma and prejudices and all these other things, you know, to love people. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, all thy strength. That's the first great commandment. And the second one is, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And when the rich young ruler came to Jesus, he, he said he had kept all these things from his youth. But the Lord said to him, it's one thing that's lacking. Bible said Jesus beholding him. He loved him. And he said, one thing you lack. And that's thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Change that for me. Just change that for me. And you go have treasure in heaven. And the man went away. He was sorrowful. He said, no Lord, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. How many times we tell the Lord we're not doing that? We don't maybe say the words actually out mouth, but if we deny what, what he tells us to do. Right? As I said earlier, when the Lord said to the woman um, about this water coming up from this well and springing up everlasting life, I mean, does she understand what it is? How could that be? She's saying already, you don't have no bucket. And, and he's telling her about what she believed immediately. It's like a child. Childlike faith, she doesn't believe. And she said, Give it to me, give it to me, please, give it to me. And you don't explain to her how he's going to do it, how all this thing happens. How do you get a well inside of you? Can a well hole inside of you? 
Where the water going to come from all of this? What does it mean? Well, he believed. She believed. When Jesus was talking to the people, and he tell them, I'm the bread of heaven, came down from heaven. They said, what, what do you mean? So, um, are we going to eat the man's flesh? Eat the blood of... What, what, we say, say, we're going to eat the flesh and drink your blood. What do you mean by all of these things? And the Bible said, many of them just went away and never walked with him anymore. They don't want to hear his gospel anymore. Right? And he was just left with his own disciples. He asked them if they would leave too. And Peter said, Lord, I mean, to whom are we that should we go? He said, Thou hast the word of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ that should come into the world. So when you believe and you're sure and you have that confidence in God, no matter what happens, whether wind or rain or storm, earthquake, whatever it is, you will hold fast to your God. As Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen? His wife thought, the devil told his wife, said, curse God and die. That's a stupid thing, though. I mean, if you are going to die now, you are going to hasten it now to condemnation. At least you are going to die, die at least in dignity and, of course, in honor before God. But you curse God and die. You are going to die anyway. But why die and go to hell? You know what I'm saying? Why die and be condemned to hell? I mean, right? Why? Well, that's the devil was tempting her. Say, tell him that. But Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So he said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. All right, we thank God for this, this lesson today. And I'm going to sing a song. Um, we're going to sing a song here. Thank God that he was waiting. He was waiting for this woman birth by the well. And she came. She, she accepted the water. He straightened her out her life. And he let her have the water. He gave her the water. He gave her the water. He gave her the water. And that's what was springing up inside of her. That's the reason why she could run and call other people. She became a, an evangelist right there. He gave her the water. He sanctified her. Hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah! He gave her the water. As the psalm, scripture said, whom the Son set free is free indeed. Amen. He gave her the water. Um, and so, let's sing a song about, there's a song that was made about that woman. It says, like a woman at a well.
come and claim the story thing of my soul. Pray of heaven, lead me till I want no more. Fill my cup with a drop and make me whole. There are millions in the world who are seeking. Seeking for things that not pass away, but none can match the priceless treasure that I found in Jesus Christ, my Lord.